We're talking about the production possibilities model in this lesson and the classic version of the production possibilities model is the comparison between two goods that a nation can produce, either guns or butter, and it must choose between these two goods. Now, famous people in history have used this analogy, including William Jennings Bryan, Margaret Thatcher, and even leaders in Nazi Germany. In fact, the song, Guns Before Butter, was written in 1979 by Gang of Four about this concept. The production possibilities model is a visual model of scarcity and efficiency. It simplifies the concept of how an economy can produce things, using only two goods as an example. It's going to show us all the production possibilities we have between these two goods. It takes the concept of opportunity cost, which we already explored, and helps us make the best economic decision we can make, which is to say, the most efficient decision. But there are some important assumptions that we need to talk about regarding the production possibilities model. So the question we're trying to answer is this, how much of each good should we produce in order to produce them in the most efficient way? For example, how many term papers and cookies should I make to get the most efficient combination? Or how much corn versus how much beef should country A produce to be the most efficient? That's where the production possibility model comes in. There are three important assumptions involved in using the production possibilities model. One, resources are used to maximize capacity. Very important. Two, resources are scarce. And three, technology remains completely constant. We're trying to use our resources to the fullest, but we only have limited or scarce resources. We're also assuming right now that the technology we use to produce our goods isn't changing at all. So what are we really saying? If you're producing the right combination of two goods, then you're using your resources efficiently. Why is this important? Because it reveals to us all the trade-offs of changing our production possibilities. We can pick any two points on a production possibility curve and explain the trade-offs or the opportunity cost of producing different combinations of these two goods. For example, if our economy is producing cars and computers only, then we can choose to produce many different combinations of cars and computers. Since our resources are scarce, we can't produce as much as we want. But we can produce, for example, zero cars or 10 computers. We could choose instead to produce five cars and zero computers. Why are these two numbers different? Because in this example, these two activities have different production rates. And when we compare the production rates, we can speak in terms of opportunity cost, like this. If we make 10 computers, we lose the opportunity to make five cars, and vice versa. By reducing this fraction down, we can say the opportunity cost of producing one car is two computers. As you can see, it takes more time and resources to produce a car than it does a computer. And the production possibilities model will show us this visually. Now, I just said that we could produce zero cars and 10 computers, or five cars and zero computers. But there are many other production possibilities in between these two that we could choose instead. With our finite resources, we could choose to produce two cars and six computers, or four cars and two computers. Then again, we could say three cars and four computers. When you account for all the possible combinations given the opportunity cost of one car equals two computers, you end up with a line like the one you see here in this simple example. Okay, timeout. I wanna clarify something important. 
Although the production possibilities model shows a straight line in this example, in the real world, the production possibilities model is a curve. As you produce more and more of one good instead of another, the opportunity costs will increase because some of the resources in an economy are only capable of producing one type of good, which means that switching from one good to another 